Welcome to Coffee Talk from the Ground Up, an ECS podcast, where we strive to provide a more personable way to communicate with employees. I'm Steve Gosselin, but you can call me Goose, and I'm part of our senior leadership team, and I'm joined here by Julie Smith, who is part of the marketing communications team and our resident Chocoholic. Say hi, Julie. Thanks, Steve. Hey, everyone. I'm glad you're joining us today. So, Steve, what are we doing here? Great question, Julie. One of the struggles with a company our size is getting a message to the masses without it being diluted along the way. From projects and people to services and career insight, we hope this podcast helps provide an avenue to communicate the stories that are worth sharing. It's to learn about our culture and feel more connected and to have some fun along the way. So what you're saying is, we hope this podcast is educational, entertaining, and encouraging. With practical advice, you can apply directly to your work and life. Well said, Julie, and that's why you're in marketing. (laughs) So grab a cup and settle in. Our attorney makes us say this, this podcast is for entertainment and informational purposes only. Nothing herein shall be construed as providing professional engineering services or used to establish the standard of care. This podcast and the comments contained therein represent only the personal views of the participants and do not reflect those of ECS. While we make every effort to ensure that the information we are sharing is accurate, we welcome any comments, suggestions, or correction of errors. Today, we're going to be talking with Tyler, is it Offers? Offers. Offers, okay. Uh, and uh, we, we've got this one titled uh, Creative Behind Music, which uh, I think everybody's going to find very interesting and uh, fascinating. Uh, I'll get us started with a safety minute. A quick safety minute for today. Daylight savings time ends this weekend, so it is a great reminder to double check your smoke detector alarms as well as your carbon monoxide monitors. So make sure that those are in working order. Change out the batteries if you need to. Um, and enjoy an extra hour of sleep this weekend. So quick introduction about Tyler. Tyler is our construction materials department manager in Austin, Texas. He joined ECS in 2015 and has had several different roles through the years. When he's not in the office, you can find him strumming his guitar or writing music, but we'll have more on that in a minute. And uh, actually in preparation for this, I got to hear uh, one of his songs. We. Sh- uh, uh, Julie shared that with me and uh, listened to it, and uh, it's really, really quite good. And I think what you're also going to find out is that our music for Coffee Talk uh, was also uh, introductory music was written by Tyler. So thanks. Thanks, man. We really appreciate that. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we, we always start with a rapid fire, and uh, we asked Tyler to pick five. So uh, what's uh, your favorite book or favorite author? I'd have to say Stephen R. Donaldson's uh, The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant series. Nice. All right. Good choice. And best vacation spot or favorite place in the world? Nothing has topped our trip to Montego Bay, Jamaica for our honeymoon. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice spot. Good for you. Uh, What song would you choose to karaoke? I'd have to stay true to my my Texas uh, native and uh, go with Texas Flood by Stevie Ray Vaughan. There you go, man. That's an all-time favorite. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I grew up in Texas as well, too, and was a big Stevie Ray fan. Absolutely. Uh, what's something you like to do the old-fashioned way? I'd say I'd like rolling out plastic limits by hand the old way. I just mm-hmm. something about the feel of it there, getting it, getting them just right the way they need to be. Yeah, yeah okay. And what would be your spirit animal? Well, uh, I'd have to say the greater roadrunner. Um, those are those roadrunners that we have running around in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, being, especially in Central Texas, uh, um, you know, and I, I've spent a lot of time in Austin, so I could appreciate that. Uh, but being a Texan, I'm surprised you didn't say the armadillo. <laughs> I had a greater roadrunner jump into a window of my truck while I was sitting on a job one day. Uh, so ever, ever since then, I'm like, that's my animal. <laughs> no kidding. That's that's pretty cool. All right. So, uh, Tyler, uh, tell us your ECS story. Uh, why did you uh, why did you choose ECS? How'd you get here? Uh, how did it happen? Uh, share with us uh, uh, about uh, your ECS story. Sure. Thanks. Uh, so one day I was working at a competitor testing company in about 2015. 
Um, I was called by a longtime friend and a career mentor who was the department manager here at the ECS Austin office at the time, uh, the late Ron Boydston. Um, and he heard many people were leaving where I was at, and he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, actually, we're all kind of going somewhere. And he said, no, you're not. He's like, I'm going to offer you something that nobody can offer you. Well, he told me to get a six pack and come over to his house that evening. And we sat on the front porch, had a couple beers. When I when I got there, he said, I'm going to offer you meat. And he said, well, well played, Ron. Uh, nobody can offer me you. And he you know, went into it a little more. You know, he said he you know, would like to bring me on as a senior laboratory technician. And then he'd like to try to pour into me whatever he's learned about project managing and leading people um, ahead of him retiring in the next five years, which is what he planned to do. Um, so I interviewed with then branch manager Bob Mischewski, and I started working for ECS shortly thereafter. Um, and, you know, I helped to reorganize the lab processes and their accreditation. And from there, I, you know, I got promoted to the lab manager and field services manager by 2018. And then ultimately uh, to this, the department manager for construction materials testing after Ron passed away in August 2018. All right. Well, excellent. Uh, you know, gl glad you chose to be part of the team, part of the pack. And it sounds like you've had a pretty fast uh, move up the chain. So good for you and congratulations. So why did you choose this career path? Why uh, not only ECS, but to get into construction materials testing and what you're doing right now? Well, it has a similar story. Um, I was, you know, my passion began for the industry back when I was 18. I was pushing carts for Kohl's department store in 2005. My friend came speeding up and was like, hey, I got a summer job. Uh, my neighbor uh, just asked me if I knew anybody else who wanted a summer job. He goes, it's a real job. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, 401k overtime. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, cool. Uh, I didn't know what that meant. Uh, he said, when, you in when he interviews you, He's going to ask you, what does your current job pay you? And he wants you to tell him that that's irrelevant. It's like, OK, so when I got to the interview and that happened, um, uh, Ron, who was the one who interviewed me at that time, he was his, he was my friend's neighbor. Um, he asked me that question and I paused and I got flushed and got a little nervous as an 18 year old kid. And I just said, oh, that's irrelevant. And he, he looked at me and gave me a real confirming look and said, good, real good. Like I followed, like I passed or I, you know, I did the right thing. I followed his instructions. Um, he began, you know, pushing me through certifications for the lab in the field. At that point, uh, he left in uh, 2006 and started his own geotechnical drilling company and brought me over there um, shortly thereafter. And I worked for his geotech drilling company as his operations manager from 2006 to 2010, uh, which ended up folding under the Great Recession of 2008. Um, he went back, he went to ECS and came to the department manager and I went to a competitor firm that I'd come from and uh, was there until 2015 until Ron picked up the phone and called me again and, and recruited me over here at ECS. Yeah, good stuff, man. That's awesome. So uh, let's jump into uh, a little bit about your creativity side, your creative side uh, and uh, your music side. Um, so how did your love for music begin? Well, I had an ear for music as a young kid. Um, my mom would sew and I they had a little keyboard set up and I was picking out uh, Eagles, a melody to one of her Eagles songs she liked. And she's like, hey, that was that was the Eagles song. Um, so she enrolled me in classical piano lessons from the age of five to about 10. And then I switched over to doing uh, blues and composition writing music uh, lessons for piano from the age 10 to 15. So it's always been uh, a part of my life and then you know just always playing and writing music just never stopped awesome so tell me a little bit about your music journey like after 10 years old uh you know did you play in the high school band were you in the church choir i mean did you con did you continue uh lessons uh you can tell us a little bit about your favorite instruments and you play in a band you know that type of stuff those are all things that us non-musician people want to know. Believe me, I sang in a choir. I think they kicked me out if I remember right. So that's funny. Um, so yeah, I started playing guitar um, and learned that my grandpa really pushed me to sing uh, when I was about 15. I came at a really good time because I, I was starting to get a little jealous of my guitar playing buddies who were getting a lot of attention at parties and, and at gatherings, uh, being able to play guitar. And I was like, there's not a piano everywhere you go. So I started learning how to play the guitar. Uh, I started playing in bands, and, and since then I've played in about six or more bands from
from the age of 15 to you know, 32, a few years ago, I stopped playing after, you know, we started having kiddos. Um, and I've recorded piano for many local bands uh, and one singer, rock, songwriter up in Ohio. Um, so I'm still pretty active with music now. So I think it's a journey that no matter how active I am in it, that it's always going to be some a part of my life. Yeah, that's cool. Great story. So does music help you in your job? I mean, do you think differently? Do you act differently because of it? Uh, how does the music uh, support you? Uh, you know, actually, as a lab technician, I feel like the equipment that we used in the lab actually helped me with my music <laughs> uh, to turn that around. You know, the the stiff shaker and the uh, proctor machine, you know, hammering down. There's a lot of rhythmic stuff there that a lot of songs came to me while I was working as a lab technician in my ears. So, <laughs> uh, but I would say that music absolutely uh, helps me in, in in work and in my life. I think it, I think I think differently because of music just in general. Uh, beginning at such a young age, um, it has everything to do with how I process my thoughts, feelings, emotions, and I think it contributes towards uh, my love for math. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, that's interesting you say that because uh, um, I, I come from a long line of non-musical people, but uh, we were convinced that uh, our daughter at an early age would was musically inclined and we wanted to learn how to play the piano. And actually, she got pretty good at it, but not because she was musically inclined. She was good at math. And uh, to her, she said to her, really, all it was was just math. So, you know, she could learn, you know, basics and actually was pretty good at it. So it's funny to say that. I've heard a lot of musicians say that. Um, so tell us a little bit, why is music import an important outlet and how do you make time for it? Music, you know, is, is really important outlet for me because it's a channel to express myself better than I could using words. I have a really supportive wife who understands how intrinsic music is uh, and has always been for me. You know, whenever we met, I was playing in a couple of bands, and so that was always a thing. And then she knows my story, so she knows it's, it's how I am, who I am. You know, now having two toddlers, uh, I've learned every nursery rhyme that there is. Uh, <laughs> I've kind of turned them into a set list where I can play them all one after one after one in the same chord progression. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, just in general, how making time for it. Uh, my, my wife helps me kind of devote some time for writing and recording, you know, sometimes she's like, hey, I'm going to go to my mom's house this weekend. You can, you know, hang out, play, play some music if you want and stuff, stuff like that. So that's a big, that's a big help because uh, it's real easy to let something like that just get covered up by being busy with work or raising a family. So uh, it's good to have that as a part of our teamwork. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I can't say that uh, I, I understand because I, I really don't, but I have, a very, very good friend, uh, and he's a great client, too. He's, we, we do a lot of stuff together, and he's a drummer in a band, and uh, and he has a regular gig like two or three times a month. He and the band, they get out, and they play these different spots, and um, his wife and my wife are buddies, and my wife, Karen, tells me, she said, okay, Friday night, we're going to go watch Jim play at such and such brewery or such and such bar. I was like, okay. So... Um, I mean, do, do, do you have stuff like that going on? Do you have a regular gig or are you uh, somebody that just like, you know, for hire the last minute, somebody calls you and is like, Tyler, we really need you this weekend. Can you come out and play with us? So currently I haven't played a, a live show since the, you know, the onset of early 2020 when, when COVID became, you know, pretty prominent. I had a set or a show that was going to play on September 5th, which canceled due to, you know, an uptick in cases and whatnot. Um, I have played some open mics. I like to do that when I'm writing a song and I'm, you know, like, you know what, I gotta, I gotta work this part out. And sometimes you need to hear it out, out on the amps and, and on the stage. Um, I, I do record with a lot of my friends. They, they'll make up some piano parts and on the computer and they can't play it. And they'll say, Hey, can you come play? Um, and then just recently last weekend, I went out and saw a buddy's band who was playing and um, during their break, he's like, we got to get you up there on piano. He's like, do I need to give you the songs or can I just call you ahead of time? And, I was like, well, I've been playing long enough and listening to what you guys are playing. I, I'm sure I could get up there and noodle around with you guys. And so I, I might be doing some more of that here soon, but really been focusing on on raising the family, spending as much time at home as possible with them. Nice. Cool. So uh, Julie and I were reading an interview with you from uh, Construction News where you talk about your song Industry Sandwich. And that was the song I previewed and listened to before I got on. Uh, can you tell our listeners about it? Uh, how to come about and what does it mean to you now? 
So industry sandwich definitely has meant something um, originally when it was written and and has you know kind of evolved and means something a little different to me now. Uh, initially, it was a it came from a term used by one of our old engineer buddies who was uh, recording our band at the time. Everything he said, he was a like a classical trumpet and horns player and played professionally in the 70s and stuff. So everything he would tell us, he was telling us like, if you want to make it, you got to do this. If you want to make it, you got to do that. Or this is industry standard. He'd use the term industry standard for everything to where we were young and adolescent, you know, in this band. We we thought it was kind of funny. So we turned that into an inside joke. So every time we were making something up in the band, we'd like, oh, is that industry standard? Um, and, you know, it, the guy had some really good points and stuff. And I think we missed them then, which I see them now. But <laughs> We had a you know a little debate in the in the studio one time and i think you know being the adolescent at the time i kind of had this passive aggressive feeling of okay well you you know that you know you're supposed to write songs like this and you're supposed to make your lyrics like that um so i was thinking man, i need to write a song that just that's just straight up the middle like what he says it takes to make it um i was making a sandwich uh, in my apartment at the time and it just hit me i was like this is about as straight up the middle as it can get the how to make a sandwich and i you let those lyrics just be as generic and cheesy as possible. And then I think the metaphors kind of set in after the song was completed. <laughs> well, there's no doubt about that. It, uh, it It's a good listen for sure. Uh, um, Julie needs to share with uh, the, the listeners about where they can uh, find his industry sandwich. So very good. So I also hear you've uh, played music at uh, some ECS, ECS events. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so when... 2017 or 2016 maybe uh, we had our first uh, client appreciation event for the Austin office and we were talking about what we were going to do and how it was going to entertain people and that you know Bob looked at me and he volunteered told me he said you're a musician he's like don't you have a band and I was <laughs> like yeah he's like do you guys want to play I was like uh yeah let me let me talk to him and um, so it was it was cool uh, getting to do that for the first client client outing um, we set up, it was a little nerve wracking because, you know, I was, I was excited to be there for, you know, interacting with clients and appreciating them. But also I, I felt like I was in my band mode where I was like, all right, got all that equipment. I got to remember my set list. Got, and so I felt like I was a little, you know, on edge, but overall it was a really fun experience uh, get, getting to play. I dressed us all up in the really bright orange and yellow ECS shirts as the band. Um, so, you know, we were, we were flashing our swag there too, and representing all right good yeah got got uh, got in costume for all that that's cool <laughs> so uh, how you know i mentioned earlier about uh the intro music for coffee talk how'd you go about uh creating the music for the podcast other than uh julie either threatening you or bribing you i, I know she gets that way sometimes <laughs> not at all she uh she did call me and wanted to said she wanted to talk about you know the podcast and wanted to talk about how they need some music and you know she thought it would be really really cool if we went organic and homegrown instead of you know getting some royalty free music just to slot in there so i really appreciated that that opportunity um the song itself is unlike any song that i would write on my own otherwise so and how that came to be was uh, they had some really cool parameters she had a, a beat beat per minute uh, range of you know 90 to 110 that she wanted it to stay between she shared a link to a song that she said that we're looking for something that's kind of like this or that has this kind of vibe um, on a royalty free site and so I, I kind of perused through those a little bit and uh, and then they said a, a length to keep in mind and that definitely made it uh, easy at first to go yeah sure and then I was like wait this is gonna be a two or two minute song like what's the progression of it gonna be so my buddy and I had a really fun time doing that uh, so I, I went to my friend's home studio here in Austin, um, Insomnia Recording Studios, and we played, messed around a couple of nights just layering some electronic parts and keyboards, and we made up some MIDI uh, sequences of our own, and uh, that, that was something that we have a lot of fun doing is creating those sounds. And so um, what came out of it was uh, something that we felt like was like a, a Candy Crush game meets NPR radio with like a golden sunrise driving to work. Um, Julie said something to keep in mind is think of, you know, somebody driving to their their first job site or first project or driving to a client event in the morning. So, you know, we're not trying to like just ram, you know, jam them in their head. You know, it's got to be 
got to be kind of easy going and smooth, you know, in the morning. So I had that in mind, you know, while we we're doing that. And I hope that that's uh, conveyed there in the song. <laughs> yeah. So you channeled your inner Kenny G, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. We, we really appreciate you, you know, taking time out and going to effort to doing that. Uh, uh, I'm sure everybody's going to enjoy it. I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go off script a little bit here. Uh being a being a fellow Texan, just to ask you a couple of questions. So, uh, so where'd you grow up in Texas? So I was born and raised in I was born in Austin, downtown, you know, St. David's, and I was raised up in Leander Cedar Park area. So it's just a little metropolitan area, just north. Um, it used to be like a day trip from Leander, just uh, going into Austin before major development came. Uh, but now it's all blended together. It looks like one and the same. Yeah, yeah. So you're pretty much uh, a native Austinite, I guess, is what they'd call them, huh? A third generation native Austinite. Yeah. <laughs> no, kidding. no kidding. Third yeah. generation. That's cool. Where'd you go to high school? I went to high school at Leander High School. All right, good. So did you have a good football team? We had a really good football team um, from when I was first getting into high school through my senior year. Um, they would go to state several times, and so we'd get to go to Dallas or San Antonio or Houston and watch them play in the big professional stadiums. Um, we had some some pretty big names. There was a couple of guys who went on to go and play, uh, or he went on. He was like third string at the Green Bay Packers whenever Brett Favre was there. Uh, but we had a couple of guys who went went really far and did well. I played on the basketball team, um, and I played through high school, and we were not a great team. We were a bunch of great individual kids. That played really well, but uh, our team record didn't show that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, a couple of things to folks uh, listening about Texas sports. There's um, there's there's two sports in Texas. There's uh, football and then there's spring football. Uh, every, everything else is secondary. Um, yeah, that, that, that that's a great story. Uh, and and uh, the reason I ask about football, uh, and I know they made a TV show and a movie about it, Friday Night Lights, but let me tell you, and Tyler will attest to this, and he can probably share some good stories, but there's really nothing like Friday and Friday night Texas football. I mean, all day at school, I mean, that's all you talk about, getting ready to the game, especially growing up in somewhat of a smaller town like Leander, going on the road, you know, taking a road trip, going to whoever your arch rival is, things like that, or, or hosting them at home, homecoming, things like that. Um, it, it's really something that, uh, you know, you experience that in your teens and it never leaves your blood. It's a, it's, it's a great, uh, great feeling and a great experience. That's 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 absolutely true and accurate. And, you know, an interesting note that you mentioned Friday Night Lights, the AC Bible Stadium at Leander High School was the original stadium that the Friday Night Light Friday Night Lights School was based on. So they they had transported that stadium over there. And that was the that was our football stadium. No the wooden, the wooden rafters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, so uh, so we're going to do uh, rapid fire Texas style or really we'll just make it rapid fire Austin style. OK, uh, best barbecue, Austin. I still got to say that it's Black's Barbecue, the original one in Lockhart. Yeah, no no kidding, yeah. And best Mexican food? I'm going to say Manuel's. It's an right. interior Mexican restaurant in the Arboretum area. Yeah, all right, good call. And Julie knows I have to ask about Mexican food because that's that's a favorite for me. Okay, so uh, a couple questions about uh, what our listeners want to know. Um, how would you answer the question, what does ECS do? I generally answer this question pretty straight up the middle by saying ECS stands for Engineering Consulting Services, and we provide environmental, geotechnical, construction materials testing, and facility services. All right, cool. And uh, what is the funniest memory from your time at ECS? I feel like there's laughing and cackling going on in our office every single day, some, at some, like, usually around that five o'clock hour. Uh, that I can hear. So there's a lot of funny things that happen. So it took a little while to try to figure something out. But I know that there is an audio recording floating around here in Austin where Zai Bobbitt and I were on speakerphone trying to strategize something in the schedule. Um, and then, and we were doing it in funny voices. And I think somebody pulled out their phone and recorded us doing that little that little back and forth banter. And, and then that was back in like 2016. And uh, a couple of years ago that just resurfaced. And somebody's like, hey, you remember this? And uh, we were able to show some people out of context, which was made it even more funny than the moment. Yeah, very good. I figured it'd be a story about Bob Ashevsky, but I have to be careful. This is being recorded, so uh, uh, we'll, we'll just leave it there. 
Um, okay, so uh, before we uh, we wrap this up and uh, let you provide uh, some final qu- uh, you know comments or you know anything you need to share with the group, um, what fills your cup? What makes you happy or brings you joy? I'd say my three year old daughter Everly Jo, uh, my two year old son Gibson, and my best friend and my wife Jen. So all right, so I got to ask you, Gibson Gibson guitars. Yeah, I, I, that's it was my wife's suggestion too. So I, I believe me, I didn't make her do that. Yeah, and your daughter's name? I mean, any connection there or any meaning to that? Um, so her name is Everly, and her uh, my wife's grandmother's name was Beverly. So she wanted, so she named her Everly, and then uh, my grandmother's name on my mom's side uh, was Johanna. She was from Prussia. And she and she was she would always go by Joe, so they would just call her Joe. So we named her Everly Joe. Yeah, awesome. And and so for those listening uh, in Central Texas, uh, most everybody has ties to Central or Eastern Europe. Uh, my college roommate uh, was from uh, uh, Central Texas, and uh, he was from a Czechoslovakian family. Uh, last name was Stefan. So, it, 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 you know, that makes perfect sense to me. So, and, and uh, the reason I asked about Everly, I was wondering if there may be some Everly brothers in there as well, too. So our nurse, our nurse told us of that. And I was like, Everly is already a word. And, and, and you know, when, <laughs> I, when I heard the song, I was like, how didn't I know that already? Because I knew that oh, song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, that's awesome. Any, anything uh, final you'd like to share with us before we sign off? Um, other than, thanking you guys for the opportunity for this and, and creating this. This is a really great thing. I think that that this is going to be um, and has, you know, infinite platform for topics and stuff. So this is ge- just genius to do. Uh, so I'm really glad to be, be able to be a part of it and, you know, get to be a part of, you know, its makeup uh, from the music perspective. Um, and then, you know, on a personal note, I got a couple of other songs coming out over the over the span of this year. I usually release them on my kiddo's birthday, so one will be released on the 28th of this month, and then the next one I'll time release over there on uh, in May of next yeah. year. So. Yeah, great, great. Well, just to clarify something, uh, Julie is the brains behind the outfit. She's the genius here, so the genius is all hers. Uh, and really, the pleasure and the honor is all ours. Uh, we appreciate taking your time out of a, out of your busy schedule to be with us. We know how busy you all are in the Southwest, uh, especially in Texas and in Austin. You guys are blowing up. You're doing a great job. Uh, Bob, uh, you know, Mark, you know, all you guys are doing a wonderful job down there and, and we really appreciate all the work you're doing and, and the great leadership you guys are providing. So thanks. And, and uh, today was really enlightening. Uh, it's great to uh, to talk to a fellow Texan, especially somebody in Austin, which is a great city and a great town, someplace I really love. And I just uh, encourage everybody uh, who's listening today, if you've never been there, you got to go there. Make sure you go by the office, spend some time talking to Tyler. He'll tell you where to go, what to do. It's a great city, uh, wonderful food, wonderful music, wonderful culture, uh, just just a great place to go visit. So make sure you go to Austin. So thanks again, Tyler. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Coffee Talk from the ground up. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have an idea on future topics, guests, or are up for a round of call, you can call me, text me, email me, just, just get in touch with me, and I'll get it to Julie, and uh, we'll get it set up. And for those of you that don't want to play golf and you may hate talking on the phone, that's okay. You can send us an email at ecsmarketing at ecslimited.com. Be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. Thanks, Julie. Here's to having a great day.